Hey cats, I've got some of my cushioned comparisons and outsole observations for you today. I'm matching up the Socony Endorphin Pro 3 against some of the best other super shoes. Lots to get through, so let's get to it. Thanks for joining me back on the channel. If it's your first time here, where have you been? Hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications to help the channel to continue to grow. Also give this video a thumbs up like, that's very important, and share it with your running buddies. Danke schön. The newly released Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 is right up here in my estimations. Super performance and comfort in this one, but how does it compare to some of the other super shoes around right now? One of its most cushioned cousins, the Alpha Fly Next Percent 2. I'm getting about three to four millimeters extra stack height here, back here in the heel in the Alpha Fly Next Percent 2 over the Endorphin Pro 3. I've lost track of how many people have asked me to compare these two shoes together. So many requests. They do seem to be the top two choices at the moment for marathons for the viewers out there. Both shoes follow the less rubber is more approach here. Both models have minimized the rubber thickness here in the outsole to provide a little bit of extra wiggle room in terms of midsole height. We have a slightly narrower heel in the Endorphin Pro 3 against the Alpha Fly Next percent too. There's about half a centimeter difference in terms of the width with the Saucony being narrower still in the midfoot. As the distance goes up weight may be more of a concern for you. I guess if you want to lug around less weight in a marathon probably makes sense. The Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 is about 33 grams or 1.16 ounces lighter in my UK size 11 compared to the Alpha Fly Next Percent 2. There's certainly a more standard or traditional feel here in the Saucony. Does feel a little bit more like a standard running shoe, I suppose, in terms of the upper. I mean, it's no race flat, don't get me wrong. None of these shoes are really, but it certainly feels more traditional than Nike's technological terror. Despite the addition of that extra foam underneath the AirPods in this version of the shoe, I do still find it quite an aggressive ride. If you're going to be hitting in the mid to forefoot, you're going to feel it. From my perspective, the Saucony is that little bit more forgiving in terms of different foot strikes. You could engage that rocker speed roll technology here by coming down in the heel and then transitioning to the mid to forefoot, but I think it handles pretty much any foot strike really that little bit more than the Alpha Fly Next Percent 2. I actually think that these two shoes are perhaps the most versatile of the current crop, more forgiving across a range of paces, I suppose. The improved grip here on the Endorphin Pro 3, I feel brings it a little bit closer to some of Nike's offerings in terms of value and versatility, and they've seemingly increased the cushion here in the midsole. It does appear to be the same stuff, but there's certainly a lot more squash there. I think it's now a very close call between these two. The Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 comes in at 210 Earth credits, although the increased price of the Alpha Fly Next Percent 2 at 270 Earth credits is surely going to push a few runners towards Saucony's stable. And if I had to have one right now, probably be the Saucony actually. I'm traveling in a few days time and it's a shoe I think I'll probably take away with me. It's that versatile, it can just sort of do anything really. I'm not going to wear it around town or while I'm going to the shops or anything, but certainly if I want to do a bit of running while I'm traveling, it's spot on. It won't add too much weight to my traveling bag either. If you're enjoying the video today, why don't you hit us with a super thanks. It does help to support the channel on a more ad hoc sort of basis. Here's another one that people have requested to compare the Endorphin Pro 3 up against the Endorphin Speed 3. You know I like to try and surprise you. Well, this is another one that everybody's asking for. This higher stack supposed training partner to the Endorphin Pro 3 comes in at 165 Earth credits here in the UK. So you've got about 55 extra for the Endorphin Pro 3. What do you get for that additional cash? Is there that much more that it makes it worthwhile? Certainly in terms of the upper and overall profile of the shoe, it's certainly a more race and pace orientated version here. Slightly narrower in the heel than the Speed 3. I think this time around the Speed and the Pro are a little bit further apart than they been before. There's certainly more stability in the Speed 3 due to that winged plate and you do feel it. It is a little bit more guided. It's not quite as fancy free as it was in the 1 and 2. I'm finding the rigidity in the Endorphin Pro 3 does facilitate perhaps a slightly faster pace 
This feels like a more nimble and slightly more propulsive shoe. I feel that the Endorphin Pro 3 is perhaps the better shoe this time round. I think it's going to stay consistent over the miles. I used to find that the speed does start to flex a little bit and isn't quite the shoe it was when you first took it out of the box. I think with the carbon plate here in the Endorphin Pro 3, it's going to stay a little bit more like it is when you first take it out of that box and start using it. I've never found that the foam really starts to give too much. It was always the plate, so I think that's why this one's the better bet this time around. Certainly a little bit more guiding in the foot strike this time. It's by no means a firm shoe whatsoever, the Speed 3. It does feel though that Socony have nerfed the shoe a little bit. It isn't quite the propulsive beast that it was before. It's not to say I don't like it, I still think it's a fantastic shoe, it's right up there. Now everybody's going to benefit perhaps from the Pro 3. In that case, if I was on a desert running island and I had to take only one, it'd probably be the Pro 3 right now. There's only about 15 grams difference between these two. I think most of that is probably in the upper of the Speed 3. They really have refined things here in the Endorphin Pro 3. Next up, the proclaimed king of the super shoes, the Vaporfly Next Percent 2. Now we've got similar weight in both pairs here. This one is in fact an 11 and a half. It comes in very slightly heavier than the Endorphin Pro 3. So it's a slight weight advantage here in the Vaporfly Next Percent 2. Biggest difference here is that much narrower heel surface area. Does feel like the Socony's a little bit more stable. Similar midsole stack and heel to toe drop though in both of these shoes. There seems to be a lack of a Vaporfly Next Percent percent three no images yet nothing to talk about nike seem to feel quite comfortable in the fact they've got the best super shoe out there they keep knocking out various different colorways of it even the last couple of weeks has been new ones bear in mind that the midsole and outsole unit in this shoe has been around since 2019 so it hasn't changed at all the proven credentials and use of this shoe over the last few years really does elevate it a little bit above some of the others i have to be honest though Socony have learnt a lot by examining some of those other super shoes. There's a load of little refinements they've made here, just simplifying those upper materials, making the shoe a little bit more durable in terms of that rubber coverage, and also losing some of the materials that they don't need. Socony appear to have tried to improve the performance in all areas of this shoe to try and match up against the Vaporfly. I think the Pro 3 is probably as close to that as anybody's come so far. They've almost replicated that underfoot magic and it really is a joy to run in this one, any pace. So I think it's a little bit down to the personal preference here, pretty much with all the super shoes it is really. How much cushion do you want? How much squash do you want? How much energy return? Do you just want it to be very light do you want it to be durable really is down to a personal preference now it remains to be seen just how durable the endorphin pro 3 will be but just looking at this pair of the next percent two after 100 miles or so i mean it's still absolutely fantastic really don't feel all that different to when i first took them out of the box and in terms of the upper materials overall durability really you can't moan it's a bit like the shore sm58 of running shoes if I had to have one though, and only one, I'd probably still go with the Vaporfly Next Percent 2. But it's marginal now. Last one up today against the ASICS Metaspeed Sky Plus. Massively different approaches here from Socony and ASICS in these two super shoes. ASICS have looked to maximise the heel and forefoot stack here in the Sky Plus. Only a 5 mil drop, if my memory serves me right. It does feel a much more aggressive shoe. It's a little bit firmer. I wouldn't say it's unforgiving by any stretch. The Flight Foam Turbo does seem to be a little bit more brittle feeling. It's a bit closer to what I remember from the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit against the super squashy and compressive, I guess you could call it Boost version 2 really, which is Power Run PB. You've got a flatter plate here in the Sky Plus versus a much more rocker-like action in the Pro 3. I've got to be honest, I've enjoyed running in both of these shoes. They're incredibly exhilarating. Very different approaches really though. A minimised upper profile here on the ASIC shoe. Though if I was going to race in anything above a half marathon, I think the Pro 3 would probably be my choice right now. This shoe just makes me feel like I want to put the hammer down if it's a 5, 10k or half marathon this would probably be my choice 
felt absolutely smashing when I used it at the A610K in London recently. Grip on the A6 shoe still has the upper hand, if you ask me, on all surfaces. It just feels fantastically good. It was a very hot day at that recent race, and it felt a little bit like I had sort of race slicks on. They were almost sticking to the floor. It was fantastic. Though that's not to say Saucony haven't improved the outsole here in the Pro 3. Pattern and positioning of the rubber just give us a little bit more traction this time around. Some people may prefer the slightly more built up heel here in the Pro 3. Others will want the more lower profile upper that we've got in the A6 shoe. I do like the ride in both of these, but certainly the A6 shoe is the more aggressive of the two. This one just feels buttery smooth at anything above 7 minutes 30 per mile pace for me. It really does feel like you're just gliding along. It was wonderful this morning. If I had to have one and only one, it's a real hard choice. I think in terms of racing, I'd probably go with the ASIC shoe. If I was doing a marathon, yeah, I'd go with the Pro. Just feel this one's a little bit more nimble for me over 5 or 10k distances. Interesting for me that pretty much all the super shoes I have come in at around about 230 to 240 grams these days. Seems that's about as low as they're getting things. I mean, you've got to have a bit of rubber, some foam and some upper materials, and it doesn't seem to get much lighter than that. They've refined the uppers as much as they can now. Everybody wants those maximized 40 millimeter midsole stacks, and the outsoles have all been trimmed down to the bare bones. I think it's a bit horses for courses with that last comparison there. It's very much about the type of ride you want from your shoe. Hope you've enjoyed those comparisons today. Let me know your views and opinions on the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 or any of the super shoes that I've covered on today's video down in the comments. Musical interlude today comes from the fantastic album from 2000, Lost Souls by The Doves. There's a beautiful song on this one guys i've forgotten about it i had my mind sort of pushed back to it the other day by another song by the strokes track four in here is called sea song it really is a wondrous thing i say a song it's more like an emotional kind of journey listening to this one got these guitars and these sounds sort of undulating they go round and round they sing about the mixture of the acoustic guitars the percussion and the piano parts on the intro really make my hairs stand on end i really love it when drums add to the impact of a melody as well that's exactly what happens here in the sea song helps to sort of lift up the melody when it needs to and brings it right down when it doesn't need to i guess you could almost say it it's kind of like a shoegaze song, but it's more impactful and dynamic than that. There's some energy there, there's some force, but combined with all these other beautiful bits that have been carefully sort of sculpted around the idea. The vocals are fantastic as well, very drawn out, almost used like strings, I suppose. I can remember the first time I ever heard this track. I think it was released perhaps as an EP or something before the album was released, but go and check it out. You will enjoy this one. The Sea Song by Doves. Thanks for tuning in, people. Always appreciated. If you're yet to do so, hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications when I roll out the new stuff for you. Also, give this video a thumbs up, like, and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Budd, and I'll be seeing you.